Okay, so straight axle or portal axle? Which one is better? Which one is worse? Which one performs better and which one just simply fails? That's what this video is about. Now, since Red Cat is the only manufacturer out right now that sells both a portal and a straight axle truck, I mean, they're both still for sale, um, I'm gonna use these two trucks as the examples for this video. The bottom left corner has a time. If you wanna skip straight forward to the actual driving part, there's your time to skip to. If not, I'm, gonna, I'm probably gonna be doing a lot of talking and some little showing this and that on the table. So the most obvious difference with the portal versus the straight is the diff clearance. I mean, it's the most obvious thing that most everybody notice. What they may not notice are the chubs or the C-hubs of the portal axle stick out and get into obstacles real bad. You'll, they'll actually hang up and stop the truck dead and then you're sitting there trying to drive around and then the tires, if the obstacle is in there wrong, uh, the tire won't even touch the obstacle, you know, kind of ride the sidewall and drive stuff. As where with this one, you will. So, you know, the clearance that's, you know, obvious, oh yeah, it's all portal, well, that's the downside of having all that clearance. Axle ratio. This has got about 6, 18 to 1. This is just under 3 to 1. For the sake of this discussion, we're going to say 6 to 1, 3 to 1. So, with a 6 to 1 overall axle ratio, the drive shaft has to spin faster. The drive shaft also spins with less torque to move the vehicle in any situation as compared to this one. It actually about half the torque on it. So, Half the torque on the drive shaft is half the torque transferred to the transmission, to the frame, half the torque twist. So as where this one will torque twist over with it being three to one, this one you may not notice it at all. You know, do they both have torque twist? Yes, they both do. But this one is way higher than this one because of the axle ratio. You can mirror your transmission, you can swap your motor around, you can put an upside down nitro burning water if you want. It's still going to have torque twist because the drive shaft still has to move the vehicle and that's all transferred straight to the chassis. Now, when you do the mirroring and all that stuff, you can actually reduce the startup torque twist, you know, where you hit the throttle, you know. But in the end, when you're steady climbing, you're still going to have the torque twist because it's still on the drive shaft, still into the transmission, still into the chassis, and there's your torque twist. Bearings. I like the bearing design on a portal axle way better than I do on the straight axle. The reason is the portal gears at the actual axle part that your wheel is actually bolted to with a 12 millimeter hex, the gears are in between the bearings. So you have a bearing on this side, a bearing on this side. The horizontal separation makes this way more stable and stronger. With the older design of the straight axle, you have two bearings, a larger one here and a small one right here. They're right next to each other, usually separated by one, maybe, maybe two millimeters at most. And that's why a lot of times you'll notice a wobble, even though the bearings feel tight. You know, it's just bad design, good design. You know, I like the horizontal uh, bearing separation way better. Uh, it's also less stress up in the actual axle because usually they got a little bit more, a little bit more separation up in the uh, pinion area which is also a benefit to keeping the pinion stable. Now, not all designs have the uh, separation up there, but from what I've seen in the portals on the Traxxas and the Red Cat, actually does have a quite a bit more separation up there than what they do on these axles. Driveline angles. Most of the time, the driveline angle on a portal axle is simply better because you have a higher center line of the actual axle tube versus this one. So you can still have the lift required to fit the tires, but not have all the driveline angle going down. This reduced driveline angle helps reduce wear on the drive shafts itself. So as where these two trucks get the same lift, this will have probably twice as much driveline angle than this one does. You know, you just have to go from here to here or here to here. You know, it just makes sense to have a more straight driveline. And it just simply flows better with least or less resistance. Wheels. Not all wheels will fit a portal axle. Um, there's a lot more C-hub there, there's a lot more stuff to get in the way of some wheels. Some wheels have the right offset, some don't. Some, to make them fit, they have to use wideners. I do not like wideners on any of my axles. 
like I mentioned previously, the bearings on this one will take a beating. And here, if you widen it out, you're just going to have more of the chub, the C-hub, just showing and hanging up on everything, plus wheel scrub. The wheel scrub on every portal axle that I've got so far has been horrible as compared to an actual uh, straight axle. Now, uh, Axial has the 8 degree uh, C-hubs, and those are some of the best designed for less wheel scrub. The tire doesn't really, you know, uh, wheel scrub. Let's, let, uh, let, let's look at this. Here are your wheels. This is no wheel scrub. They simply turn. With wheel scrub, they'll do this number. You know, um, hard to explain that if you don't know anything at all about mechanics, but if you take your TRX4 and you turn it and your front tire comes way forward when you turn left, the front right tire, uh, and it starts hitting stuff, and this tire is way to the back, that's wheel scrub. If you take something like uh, like the bouncer here, which has the 8 degree uh, C-hubs on it, they, there's not a lot of scrub as compared to the portal axle on that one or that one. So that's something to take into consideration. And if you're in competition like I do, the wheel scrub can actually help you. If your bumper's in the way, you turn that wheel, that tire has so much wheel scrub as opposed to the axial uh, design that the tire will come forward and actually contact stuff. So you can use that design flaw to your advantage. Appearance. As far as looking at these trucks, these trucks did not come with portal axles. You know, they just didn't. I never saw a Bronco with portal axles that wasn't custom built. Um, I don't think the Scout ever came with portal axles. Uh, this Gen 7 whatever it is, I've got the portal axle on it over here. I mean, this is actually more scale. In most cases, a straight axle is more scale than a portal. So, if scale is 100% your thing, you probably want to stay away from portals, and I would recommend the Axial AR44 axles. They have a 375 to 1 ratio. They turn super sharp, which is sharper than just about any scale axle out there, like a Dana 60 or a real Dana 44. They don't turn 70 degrees. However, if you're into scale, stay with that style axle. As far as efficiency goes, I gotta say the straight axle, because it's a much simpler design, you know, it doesn't have the portal gears, the uh, reduction, and some guys like to pack their axles full of marine grease because they like to dip it in the water all the time. I would have to give efficiency to the straight axle, just because, like I said, less moving parts. With this, you can see a little bit of the differences in the axles. You can see the high diff clearance right here that the portal gives you. You can also see these C-hubs that really stick out. They catch stuff like I mentioned earlier. Now this one, the C-hubs, you know, they don't really interfere as much, but the axle does hang lower. Now this axle on the Gen 7 is really similar to the uh, first gen axials. Now the second gen axials and the ascenders, uh, they have a much smaller ring and pinion at the axle, and you end up with more clearance, but still, it's not as much clearance under the diff as this one. So, here you go, straight axle, kind of hangs low. Also has a lower center of gravity by design than what this one does, you know? So, that's your visual differences between the axles. Straight axle design is really simple, just straight through the knuckle, you know? Nothing special at all with that. The portal has obviously a lot more to it. Now notice I'm running aluminum and uh, well, there's a reason for that because the knuckles are known to flex and you can break stuff. As far as bearing separation goes, I really like the portal design way better because you have a lot more horizontal separation than the older design. And the older design with just a tiny bit of wear anywhere on the outer races, the bearings at all, you'll get, a, you'll get wheel wobble. Now the uh, inner bearing here is a 10 by 15 by 4. The outer bearing is a 5 by 10 by 4. Now over here the inner bearing is a 4 by 8 by 3. The outer bearing is a 6 by 12 by 4. Now the reason for these bearing sizes, you know you may think, okay, this has got a really tiny bearing, it's going to die a lot. Well no, because of the horizontal separation and to date I haven't heard of anybody actually breaking the bearings on the Red Cat Gen 8 axle. Now, these right here, I've went through a bunch of them. 
So that's the bearing separation I was talking about. Okay, so now that you've seen that, I'm gonna take these two trucks outside and show you guys a few things on the rock pile. Okay, so hopefully you can see a little bit of the positives and negatives on both axles. I mean, I tried to find a spot where the chub would actually hang up, but on my particular rock pile, it's not exactly a comp course, and I actually could not find a spot to hang it up on that. So, good or bad for the portal, take your choice. However, you guys saw the hole. You saw how these tires on the portal truck went almost all the way completely into the hole. The uh, straight axle did not go that far in, the straight axle actually, in my opinion, won that round because the tire was easier to come out of the hole. Now, on the diff clearance, you know, that, that little brick that I straddled, you know, this one never stood a chance. So that was clearly a win for the portal. Now, as far as overall win, a winner or loser for these particular axles, really, that's in your opinion. You know, I mean, like I pointed out, if you wanted, if you wanted a full scale axle, then the Axial 10-2 axle, in my opinion, is the most scale out there. It's actually, you know, it just looks better. Um, if you want a portal axle, in my opinion, you can't go wrong with, for pure strength, the Traxxas. The Traxxas portal axle, in my opinion, is just simply a stronger axle than the Red Cat one. However, I use the Red Cats because they're the only manufacturer that currently makes both style axles. So, anyway, uh, the final results, you know, that's really up to you guys. Um, if you've driven both the straight and the portal, post up in the comments below and just let me know and let everybody else that views this video know your thoughts on straight axle versus portal. So guys, I'm looking forward to reading your comments and thank you all for watching.